I'll go uh, to Czech Republic, I think, just to know what it tastes there, you know? I know like Pilsner Achiel is like just a regular beer out there, but it's, it's, it's so good, you know, it's super crushable and, and, and the, the, the whole like um, story about Pilsner mm -hmm. Achiel and, 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 their, and their beer and everything, yeah, probably go there, but not sure my wife and the kids want to go there, but. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to All Beer Inside, back to the brewery editions of the episode. Today we are in downtown Sutton at Microbrasserie à la Bordage, and joining us is the owner, Cédric. Hey guys. Hi, uh, thanks for having us today. We really appreciate you taking time in your schedule to speak with us about your brewery. Uh, so you brought me some beers to try. What's the first beer I'm going to be trying? Yeah, it's a Pignon sur Pilsen, which is a um, Czech style Pilsner. Um, very sass forward and crisp, you know, um, very, you know, we try to reproduce as much as we can um, the Pilsner Arkel, which in my opinion is like one of the greatest uh, Pilsner of all time. So yeah. Yeah, that's super delicious, very on point. What's the alcohol percentage on this? Uh, 4.5. Okay, so very definitely crushable. Yeah. You could have a few if you want after skiing. Uh, speaking of which, you are in Sutton, which is great. Uh, so what's your beer story? What brought you to create La Bordage? Dominique and I, my girlfriend, um, opened our small pub and restaurant back in 2015. And yes, yeah, six years later, we're here, um, open or like tap room and wine bar here, just uh, two blocks from uh, the original restaurant. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I mean, you do have a restaurant, two buildings yeah. over, which is very cool. So I like uh, the concept of two where... Uh, I guess, do you have just the restaurant license over there, or uh, is No, it... it's like a, we also serve a wine and drink, and okay. uh, yeah. But you don't have to eat to drink at both locations? Uh, no, here, we, here we're just a bar, so here's okay. no, there's no restaurant, you can just have a, a glass of beer or a glass of wine. Okay, yeah. and uh, so being one of the first actual microbrasseries or microbreweries in Sutton, yeah. was the town very welcoming to the idea? Yeah, yeah. very much. Uh, yeah, when we opened, everyone was just so pumped about it, and yeah, like Sutton miss missed that thing, mm -hmm. you know, and, and uh, back in 2015, and yeah, everyone was just really happy to finally have a place to to hang out for for après ski or après cycling or after hiking. You know, it's a very like a sports town, let's say that, <laughs> yeah. and yeah, like. We're a very, very small town, but everyone was just like super pumped to have, finally have a place to hang out, yeah. I mean, you're pretty much next to the resorts, so obviously, you know, you're just having Canadian skiers and you're 15, 20 minute drive to the American border, so yeah. it's when the world's reopened a little more, you're going to get everybody back in here, which is great. Yeah, so. yeah, hopefully soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're all hoping very soon. I think we're all hoping to be able to travel again feel a lot safe about it, so yeah, I look forward to it. Um, any, anything when it came to permitting or anything like that, location, roadblocks in general when creating uh, the brewery? Um, no, like the original one was very like, it went very well. We had, we, we bought a small five uh, hectoliter system and we just put it in straight in in the restaurant, Bill Wall, and it was pretty much it. Um, as I said, it went very well. Uh, for this one, it was a bit more complicated because we're like we had to fit all of this, and we're on the main street. It's not there's no dock, there's mm -hmm. no like a, it's not it's kind of like semi industrial let's say that. So half half big, but yeah. you know still small. But you know we have like to 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 fit all the grain inside here and and all the cans and everything. So it it, it was a bit of a challenge to like to build it probably, but it turns out very well. Well, it looks like there's a park right in the back too. So yeah. I guess just getting a delivery truck in yeah, the for back the is a lot more painful than. <laughs> yeah, for the first um, for the first delivery of the the, the like Equipment. let's say the big piece. But now we can just we'll have to fit it uh, and those door <laughs> okay. the new fermenter uh, next week. Yeah, oh, very cool. Yeah, awesome. 
so uh, microbrasserie à la Bordeaux, translated in English, is uh, boarding microbrewery in a yeah. sense. Uh, what made you guys decide? Uh, so it's you and your girlfriend who yeah. own everything. So. Yeah. Uh, what made you both decide à la Bordage as, as the brand? Um, when we were like home brewing, we were like, we tried to find and find a, like just a nice name, you know, uh, just for like that, that, that fits with, with beer. It, it didn't have like any like, um, you know, more complicated um, answer than that, let's say that. And uh, yeah, we were like just trying to find the right, the right name and à la Bordage, like it's super nice you know you, you just say it like à la bordage yeah. and just hang out at the bar and just bring some beer and yeah it was pretty much uh, so you have some very unique names and labels where where did those come up where'd you come up with those for the name it's pretty much me thinking about names when i'm brewing and um for the label i work with a friend of mine which is a uh, Matt who who is a graphic designer and we'll build up this idea of like doing a pattern on on every cans and just take it like simple, pretty much all the, 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 the caps are white and, and just a small logo on the other side, you know, because we're not doing any distribution. So people know uh, when they come here, mm -hmm. they're buying a la Baldash beer. And when you were just started with the restaurant, mm -hmm. was it uh, just growlers or the cochon or? Uh, uh, at the beginning in 2015, we were uh, allowed to have growlers at, at this time. And then like, I think it was in 2017, we started. Uh, growler, but it was just so crazy that we weren't able to fill everyone. Uh, so yeah, this is why like the the the, the whole tap room and and, and new uh, facility started uh, uh, building in our head. Mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, very cool. Uh, I mean, the only unfortunate thing I see for you guys is there's a building between the two that you can get all three or yeah. <laughs> just next door. Maybe so. one day. Maybe one day. <laughs> Maybe we'll see. <laughs> uh, what are they? Uh, ice cream and something else from what I can see. Yeah, it's so. a chocolaterie, so a <laughs> chocolate factory. Oh, so speaking of kind of the chocolate factory, would would you collab with a beer with them? Um, I don't know, maybe one day at one point. Right now we're pretty much doing like a collaboration with friends. Um, we don't want to do like any collaboration with just to do collaboration, let's say that. Mm -hmm. So we try to, we're doing it with friends yeah. just to have fun and, and, and learn from each other. Uh, who have you collabed with uh, when it comes to brewing? Um, we did a few collaborations with Mezarem. Uh, there's a really good friend of, of, of Dominique and I, and uh, we just, it's just a real hangout all the time when we're brewing beer, and we just share some idea and have the, like, the same idea of, of, uh, of the beer industry, let's say that. Uh, we also had a collaboration uh, with uh, Brewski lately. At uh, the beginning of the year, it was very, very fun. And uh, we're planning some few more collaboration for our sixth anniversary in August. Yeah, yeah that's great too because uh, Quebec's reopening very slowly, uh, which is good, I think. Uh, uh -huh. But I, you may be able to have like a full tap room, a full uh, terrasse patio, so mm -hmm. both locations. It's that's pretty cool. So. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 already like full all the time. So we're <laughs> we're, we're just very happy right now that. And see people like this is why we're doing this. To, it's to see people. It's not just to, you know, stay on the other side and brewing beer. We want to see people, and this is why we're not doing distribution. We want people to come here and hang out and mm -hmm. talk about beer, talk about wine, talk about food. You know, this is what we love, and uh, yeah, we're super happy. <laughs> uh, when it comes to collab, is there that one dream collab? Obviously, Vermont, New York, twenty minutes away. Uh, Ontario, maybe an hour and a half, like any kind of dream collab between a general decent area? Yeah, well, maybe uh, we do love uh, Vermont a lot and maybe one day we'll have the opportunity to to like uh, to brew with some some people uh, over there. And just as I said, I don't want to like uh, just uh, brew a beer to brew a beer. Mm -hmm. it, it, I want it to be fun for both of the the, 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 the squad say that and uh, so yeah maybe one day we'll have the opportunity to uh, yeah and you mentioned your your check is kind of based on Pilsner or Kel could you ever say yourself going to Europe and hopefully doing a beer with them? Uh, ho hopefully I'd love to go to um, to Pilsner or Kel and try their beer unfiltered and uh, you know that is this but um, my brewer uh, Jean uh, went there and uh, yeah he's just like a, a 
you know, more classic kind of like a, a guy and I'm more on, on the, uh, you know, IPA kind of stuff. So we just fit very well. And he went to like a few times in, in Germany and um, to try different kind of beer and also in uh, Czech Republic. So hopefully one day I'll have the, the opportunity to go there. Very cool. pandemic. <laughs> uh, what's beer number two I'm going to try here? It's the Terrazzo, okay. which is like a um, regular IPA, uh, Citra and Strata. Really strata forward, uh, you know, super crushable, 7% though. Mm -hmm. But, you know, um, just like a very smooth beer with a small um, small citrusy at the end, yeah, let's say yeah. that. And, 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 you know, a, a very like smooth mouthfeel. Yeah, it's, um, it's like drinking pineapple juice. I could have a few until the 7% kicks in. So, uh, you know, start with maybe one or two Pilsners and end my night on, <laughs> on this because I, if I start my night on this, then this is my night and that's it. Yeah. So, <laughs> super delicious, very crushable, very dangerous when you think about a 7% IPA mm -hmm. that tastes like pineapple juice. So. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. Uh, so what's been your beer journey? Like La Bordage wasn't your first. Where did you kind of start your beer journey and where to where you are now? I started home brewing. Well, at the beginning, beginning, my father bought uh, like, uh, like, a, you know, like a, on Amazon, I think, or like eBay at that time. And just like a small brewing system, well, home brewing system and, and beer wasn't good at all. <laughs> Um, but after that, Dominique and I like started to like, uh, like build or like a small brewing system. And, um, yeah, after that we apply for breweries. Dominique got a job at uh, Glutenberg and I got a job at McCoslin. So yeah, it started that way. And after that, um, Dominique, uh, was doing also like a study at, the, at the university. And then I moved to La Marabour and, uh, and this is where we started building our, our, our like our plans to, 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 to come back here and in, in, uh, in the Eastern Township, yeah, because we're from here, so yeah. Very cool. Yeah, I'm a big fan of La Mer à Boire. Um, I like how they're Saint-Denis, three floors, mm -hmm. uh, back terrasse, front terrasse, well, very small front terrasse, yeah. except when they close Saint-Denis and it's a big front terrasse, mm -hmm. so that's, uh, that's convenient. Uh, you obviously have your side terrasses yeah, uh, at, uh, in both places. Yeah. Uh, do you know if has does that never kind of shut down the street for a day to have like a no, celebration? No, um, it's like um, a, a provincial street. Okay, okay. So we do have like big trucks who go to Vermont, mm -hmm. and and it's the only way actually. <laughs> so this is why we we can't close, and it's uh yeah, it's part of the game I think. But we have like enough space here. We have like uh, twenty places on this on this terrace, and on the restaurant we also have like a fifty six place on the on the terrace, which is good. Uh, did the city, because with the pandemic, obviously, everybody mm -hmm. had to change things. Uh, did the city let you, like I mentioned, there's a park in the back. Did they almost consider allowing you to have uh, picnic tables or anything in the park? Well, that's we, still part of the brewery or? Um, we do have picnic tables on the back, but we're still managing everyone right now at our two facilities. So we don't have, we like when the restaurant is very, very full, we do offer like takeouts. So they can go just in the park and buy like a four packs, um, a stamping four packs on the other side and yeah, yeah go in the park. Yeah. When, when the pandemic first shut everything down, mm -hmm. did you guys go on Uber Eats or did you just have pickup or? Yeah, or... no, we don't have Uber Eats here, Okay. but uh, we were like just uh, the day after we already started like to have like a f well or full menu uh, available on takeout. We were also doing like um, some prêt à manger, so okay. like a butter like, chicken yeah, yeah, yeah. and that kind of stuff like straight out the the, the day after we they, they 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 shut us off so so we tried uh, to 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 like to work and and um you know trying to 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 do our best with yeah. with short notice time yes, yes. <laughs> now i think everybody tried to do their best to adapt mm. on the fly because this is the first time in a hundred years that something like this happens. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to the restaurant side, mm -hmm. do you have, do you build the food around the beer or do you make food pairings with beer? Like kind of what do you do there? Uh, we want to have like a very like comfort, comfort food, um, Bob style, you know, so we, ha we have like a, 
uh, burgers, poutine, nachos. We also have like some fresh salads and uh, like chicken wings and that kind of stuff. So very like to just like, it's, it's just a hangout spot. And, but we do have like a full menu and we do have like, a, like around 10 burgers. So we, we do love building burgers and different kind of stuff. And it just fit well with beer. Let's, and yeah, we're not doing like some very, we're not doing like fancy pairing, but it's just, it just go well together, you know, comfort food and, and beer. <laughs> Uh, so, I mean, obviously you had things solidly going before the pandemic. Uh, when you have uh, Americans uh, traveling up for skiing mm -hmm. or uh, Montrealers coming out to Sutton uh, and they come here, what are the kind of those gateway beers, as I like to call, where if somebody's at home in Quebec drinking Labatt 50 or, yeah, Labatt 50 or Americans drinking kind of Keystone Light, what's that gateway beer you introduce them to to, to have them try craft? We do have the, the Golden Ale, which was our first beer that we brew on the uh, other system. It's just an um, English style pale ale, so very crushable, uh, but more, you know, with more texture for sure than, than a regular, like, uh, let's say, Labat 50, which is, I think Labat, Fis Labat 50 is not a bad beer. Mm -hmm. It's not that awful. There's way more other awful beer. Um, but yeah, so the idea was just to like, hey, let's try this. And, and if you don't like it, it's fine, but just try it. And then when people try this, after that, they go all the way to like a, oh my, let's say like a, an imperial stout. So yeah, people just, just are scared sometime, but when you like try to explain and work with the customer, you finally like, uh, when you hook it, you got it, so. <laughs> Perfect. And uh, you also mentioned that you have wine. Where, where are you getting your wine from? Um, we're trying to, as much as we can, from Quebec and, and Ontario, but it's, it's uh, and, and Canada, not just Ontario, but Canada, but it's really, really hard at this time with the SLQ and everything. So we're just trying to find like a, a really nice wine from um, as much natural possible that respect the environment. And we're not working with, with a big wine winery and mm -hmm. yeah just trying to find the, the, the right wine and and it's, it's just a small card but we rotating a lot so we try to to as as the beer we're trying to like um, work with the customer and uh, yeah so they are kind of craft wine when you think about yeah. it. it is it is supporting local companies yeah. like you said all natural which is always good uh, craft beer obviously all natural as well so that's uh, you know supporting the environment supporting local so that's, yeah. that's kind of the important stuff yeah that, exactly. that I find yeah. Which is awesome. Yeah. Uh, what was one of the first beer you homebrewed? I think it was like a wheat beer with um, like the McCoslin one. The, the oh, apricot. Beer. Apricot. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I think it was the first one. It wasn't good at all. But, yeah, and also like a maple brown ale-ish. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, really like it. You want to do like a craft beer, so you're putting everything in it and just hope for the best. But yeah, yeah it wasn't good at all. Thank you. Well, I mean, obviously you've learned, you've adapted, uh, and you you had your flagship beer, which was your La Bordage's launch beer. I think what's very pushed us, um, you know, into the scene, it, it was the captain. It, it's it's not on um, it's not on draft here. It's on the other side. It's a oatmeal stout. Okay. But yeah, it, it started, yeah, yeah, people starting to talk about us with our oatmeal stuff, which is funny. And after that, we brewed a pagai, and, uh, which is our like, kind of the f original flagship uh, IPA uh, with, um, with Citra and Citra Cryo and Simcoe. And yeah, after that, all our beers went very well. And, uh, but yeah, the, the, f the first two one, let's say it's the pagai and the Captain Oak, uh, the oatmeal stout. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> What's the third beer I'm going to be having here? It's a uh, Old Meier. It's it's an imperial stout, um, a barrel aging imperial stout with a whiskey barrel and yeah. um, bourbon barrel. Oh. We then blend it together because uh, yeah, and it's just Be beautiful well. smell. <laughs> yeah, with just a touch of vanilla at the end, and um, yeah, it's just it's ten percent, but it's it's very good. Oh, that's yeah. This is something that's. Like a campfire beer, or yeah. if, um, like I said, you're next to the resorts, the, the skiing resorts, so it's like sit by the fire or in your expensive condo that you're renting and uh -huh. enjoy one of these with maybe a cigar. This was, yeah, uh, yeah. This well, like the end of the day, it's like more like a scotch thing, a whiskey thing. Yeah. Wow. This is a tasty, tasty beer. Thanks, man. This is something that, that I'm a big fan of, is, is one of those 
not during the summer, but kind of when it's turning from fall to winter mm -hmm. where I could still sit in my backyard yeah. and have a cigar and a beer. This, this is nailing that. So <laughs> it's, that's fantastic beer. Thanks. Awesome. Uh, okay. So you're in Sutton, you're one of the first Miko Bassities, but somebody comes here and they try all your great beers. Any friends in the area you suggest they try? Uh, well, Dunham is really, really good. It's a really good brewery. It's, it's, it's well known and we're not doing uh, uh, the same beer at all. So it's, it's very nice uh, to, to try different kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, after that, um, there's also come, what's close here? That's really good. Well, La Ferme is really good. It's in Shefford. They're brewing some, um, some Saison that I love and, and some Grisette. This is not the style that I usually brew, so yeah, those those two places, it's a it's a for sure spot. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> um, what made you decide cans or switch to cans over just growlers or uh, they're a lot less popular now, but bottles. Yeah, bottle line is kind of big, and yeah, we're we we love the idea of like you know you drink your can and then recy recycle it and and the, the labeling it's better and ev everything's better with cans, you know. It's it's easy to bring. It's it's in four pack. I think it's way better uh, yeah. overall for that kind of beer. But you know, for an imperial style, you want to like to have it in bottle because you want to share and like have an experience, a, a different kind of experience. So when we're doing like a um, imperial style, and we're, we're doing in seven fifty just to to uh, enjoy. Let's say like uh, share the, the the experience more. Yeah, but this one you just crush it yeah. and get. Uh, so I asked this of everyone, now I have to add this, when, did, when it's safe to travel again, when you could go anywhere in the world without having to worry about coming back and isolating for two weeks, you could go, you could travel, mm -hmm. a beer vacation that you've never been on that you need to go on. I'll go uh, to Czech Republic, I think, just to know what it tastes there, you know. I know like Pilsner Afkel is like just a regular beer out there, but it's 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 so good you know it's super crushable and 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 the the, the whole like um story about pilsner mm -hmm. and, and and their and their beer and everything yeah probably go there but not sure my wife and the kids want to go there but <laughs> <laughs> so i'll say i'll go to massachusetts then <laughs> have you uh, uh have you ever been to oktoberfest like real oktoberfest or? no okay. no i haven't that also be maybe yeah maybe yeah, yeah for sure uh, like i'd love to go to germany and, yeah. and, and 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 see and taste beer but you know it's not sometimes it's not fit wells with the kids so yeah maybe one day when i'll have the the, the, the time so you have your anniversary coming up in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, after the anniversary, what's kind of what's next for La Bagdasha's brand? Hmm. Don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> more canning, we're... more distribution, more. I don't know. I, I, as I said, I love the idea of people coming to Sutton for for the beer, and we do have like a wonderful town. So we'll see. We'll we'll work on a barrel aging program uh, for for the winter for sure. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. And just we're just enjoying it right now, so we'll just keep it that way. <laughs> uh, as you mentioned, Priest Joe, uh, your cans are sometimes available at boutique Cheers. Yeah, exactly. Just sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know. I've uh, like like I also mentioned Priest Joe. It's it's. I'd never seen you guys on shelves before. I only discovered you because I googled Quebec breweries recently to start <laughs> okay. to show up again. And it's like, oh, La Valdage. I'm like, huh. And you mentioned 2015. I'm like, how have I never had your beer before? Yeah, sometimes when you're not canning, you just if like it's it's not all the people that that look like like you said for like all the list of the the the, the, the uh, 150 breweries in Quebec. Mm -hmm. So that makes sense. But now like we're we're canning, and we also have like some very nice collaboration with friends. I think people will start to 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 like see. What we can do more. <laughs> I oh, say that, cool. and with the the Butzik Cheers, um, who sometimes have our beer, it helps for sure. Yeah. No, it's great. Um, the more more shelves you could be on, the better. Obviously, uh, with what with everything coming down and the pandemic, you, you probably had your regulars still coming in and buying all your beers, so that's keeping you guys afloat. Plus your food program that you still had going, which is great. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you uh, you kept busy, and that's important, and you survived. Uh, I don't know many who have failed during the pandemic, especially breweries. They've th 
three opened in Quebec, like seven opened in Ontario. Yeah, Who knows so, yeah. where else? So. Yeah, beers. Everyone will will still drink beer. So I, I think we're we just let's go forward mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, it helps. That's great. Uh, I have no other questions for you today, so <laughs> let the audience know where they can find you. Uh, yeah, we can find us on Instagram, à l'abordage tap room, or à l'abordage microbrasserie, which is the restaurant, and also on Facebook, à l'abordage microbrasserie, and à l'abordage tap room, and buvette. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. And if you're ever in downtown Sutton, definitely come and check these guys out. If you're skiing, this is some good après ski. That's all <laughs> I'm going to say. Yeah. Or cycling, après cycle. <laughs> après cycle. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> uh, as for us, allbeerinside.com is the website. If you like this, please subscribe and hit the notification bell for all future episodes. Uh, at All Beer Inside on all social media. And as I say at the end of all episodes, drink craft, not crap. <laughs>